And thank you so very much for joining us for this edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacksmill and a very special welcome to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. So we have a very special program for you this evening. We're going to be having a special investigative report by Giovanni Dennis. Now he looks at the Walker's Place of Safety fire that took place three years ago and what has happened since then. After that, we're going to be talking to some operators of children's homes to hear their issues, their challenges. I can imagine, especially in the pandemic, how are they doing? And in studio with me, I have Sylvester Anderson, who is acting chairman of the Elsie Beamond Home for Girls. We also have with us Desmond Whiteley, who is president of the Children's Home Association, as well as manager of the Sunbeam Home for Boys. Chairperson of Maxfield Park Children's Home, Empress Golding, will be joining us as well on Zoom. So we thank them all so much for being here. But first, let's go to this special report by Giovanni Dennis. Shortly after midnight, January 16, 2018, Firefighters are desperately trying to save two girls trapped inside this home. They were unsuccessful. Feel it to my heart. But the kids were calling out my name. We pull up a nice and they pick them run out of my youth next door is over the, over the upstairs places to take out some of the kids I mean, and put them out of the road with Miss Gracie out of the road, traumatized, drop them out of the road. I mean, they mafia take her up. A thick plume of sadness covered the island in the days and weeks after. The official report from the Jamaica Fire Brigade concluded an electrical short circuit caused the fire. 34 of the 36 children survived. Two died. But more than 1,100 days later, how are the survivors? The Child Protection and Family Services Agency is responsible for monitoring children in residential child care facilities. Rosalie Gage Gray is CEO. The 34 children, as you might be aware, were reintegrated into other facilities and um, from all accounts are doing well. Um, we continue the support, um, psychosocial support. But a source at one of the three homes where the children were placed told us some are still troubled. Others were traumatized all over again by the August 2019 fire at the Jamaica National Children's Home where they had been placed. As painful as it may be, we must revisit 17 Lindhurst Crescent, the place it all started. Investigators are still here at this moment trying to piece together information to determine what could have started the deadly blaze. Three years ago, in the wee hours of January 16, 2018, I stood in this position as firefighters were seated just behind where I'm standing right now at the end of their cooling down operation right here at what used to be the walker's place of safety. At the time I had heard about a heroic neighbor who had helped rescue several of the young girls who were trapped inside the burning home. At the time however he didn't want to speak and didn't make himself available although I was inquiring about his whereabouts. Tonight however he is speaking out for the first time. He was still apprehensive, saying I was lucky I caught him at a good time. Got the on your side tonight, trust me. Kimani Anderson received a badge of honor for gallantry for rescuing some of the wards. He had just gone to bed. The screams jolted him from his sleep. Barefoot, he rushed to help. I hesitate. Someone just run in, kick off the door. At the time, he was screaming in the same room. Um... When I at the door, you have flames that come through um, because you have another um, room beside the head. So um, the, the, the flames now are come towards the other room. You have a lot of smoke. You can't even see in there to see how many children are in there. However, I run inside. It's a three little girl. I escort them outside. Those Come. three girls, what were they doing with one incident? All right, same time them start screaming, them had a ball, well traumatized because, as I say, the flame was coming over to that room. The ceiling began caving in. The ceiling did a catch a fire. All right, and you have local fire debris a drop in the same room. 
one of the girls them um, say a fire in her head. You have another one fired up on her shoulder, even now them have the scar. You understand? As I said, I don't hesitate. Run towards them aid, try to get them out, get them out to the front. Then I start here screaming from the same room. He was desperate to get back inside, but a hindrance. It's because we get the door open, you know, breeze start getting the house, the, the room. And you know, once some breeze start getting out of the room, the fire has got to start ignite all over the place. So me you now, I try to go back inside of the room. You understand? Person start all on for me and I tell myself, no. As I say, I hear screaming. Only if it understand, say, you have one of the females, them. She apparently, she kind of different. She can't walk on the cap like that. You understand? And, well, if I did know, if I did know, so she did have a look of disabledness, she was the first person with her render assistance with. To this day, he's bothered. Sleepless night. You understand? Sleepless night because each time I say, you know, me go sleep is like the screaming, I start here, but the voices of the local girl, I start here, but, you know, but, you know, as time goes by, you know, gradually get over it, you know, but not forgot it. Trust me. You still live here? Mm -hmm. You still have to pass the place every day? <sighs> What's that like? Cut up. Trust me. Cut up. You understand my feel? feel hurt. He laments not receiving any counselling afterwards. His brother, Mark, remembers the children as more than just neighbours. There's not a day that pass, we don't walk past the homes here, where you have the kids outside playing and Miss Grace would be like, Mark, you got a road now. The, the relationship did start it between all of us. No disrespect, you know. Um, we not pass them on some morning or evening, so Mutual respect the dead. He recalls the morning routine. Normally you hear the kids early as the morning over there make nice. You know, as five thirty, you don't hear them over there. Miss Grace I say, you know, come, you know, come. Get to the self together because breakfast sword and all of that. So they must get up and them fresh up themselves and then they have them devotion and all of that, you know? And then they have them food and further on up in the day they would have let out couple of them in the yard for play and then and then I said come out after that said they go in there about, you know. I asked if he'd ever participated during playtime. Playing with them, you know, the littler ones would want me to lift them up because I'm much taller than them. So lift them up and put them on the swing. You know, uh they had two mango trees over there. Two of them still dead, you know. Um, you know, so when that time come around when the tree ripe up, I'd be the one most of the time to climb the tree and it would be like, Mark, Mark, pick that one there for me, pick that big one there, you know, so all of those stuff, you know, I miss it, honestly. Which one are you talking? This one right here? Yes, man, the, the, what is, the Jewelry, you know, that same tree. I have the East Indian fir that to the side. It have a blacky tree on the back, but that barely bear. Which one was your favorite to pick for this? This one, man, you know, because it shot, so them pick up among them easy. The neighbor I spoke with on the dreadful morning after, Eric, requested to be anonymous then, but not this time. You no, know, I remember it, it kind of obvious away, you know? Life has been lost and you can't feel good about that, you see what I'm saying? But sometimes I remember the kids that call up my name, and, you see what I'm saying? So now we so I'm about to try to reflect back on that. Like Mark and Kimani, he feels personally hurt. Kids, them and them, it's like, all the friends them start calling me and them know me like that. Some of the things we work out for the woman, work for everybody, and like, they look out, they look out, repair furniture, she calls me and does it, and we do it and so forth. You understand them always calling on me and so forth. So you kind of look away from you know, say, you remember certain things, like remember those things, because you know, life lasts and you know, feel good. Could have been mine or anybody else one. Eric, Kimani and Mark want to erase the memories of 2018. But not Susan Goff. The human rights advocate wants to keep the tragedy on the national agenda. 
She made several access to information requests in her search for the truth of what happened that night. She got some documents, but still has many questions. We don't know if their deaths were preventable or not. We don't know whether the systems that were responsible for them failed, whether any particular agencies of the state that had responsibility for their care failed. We don't know whether individuals who had responsibility for their care failed. A review of the child care sector was done by the Education Ministry. That review is subsumed in this final report by the Child Protection and Family Services Agency. We'll examine the report and subsequent actions momentarily. But first, as the Prime Minister declared during a visit to the location the morning after. When incidents like these happen, it triggers an administrative response, which is to review what actually happened, uh, from, from whether or not the building was appropriate, from whether or not we need to spend more resources to build better facilities, to see whether or not there was negligence. So, was there negligence? Which government agencies were involved and what role did they play in all of this? We continue to explore those issues when we come back in all angles with this special report by Giovanni Dennis. Do stay with us.